good afternoon, welcome to Maths Live. Um, already got some shout outs, I've got Katie, uh, I've got Sam, uh, I've forgotten already now, I'll have to go and have a look. <laughs> um, remember you've got your starter task on here, so the starter task is round 13.528 to the nearest whole number and the nearest tenth and then the nearest hundredth. Give that a go. I'm just going to Shut that door because it's noisy. So we've got hi Katie, hi Lily Rose. Hi Elliot. Hi Ariana, hi Lucia. Some answers coming in. Fantastic. Hi Renee. Oh, I'm glad you're joining your sister. Hi Harnick. Well done. Hi Jensen. Fantastic. Well done, Sam. Giving it a good go. Brilliant. Right. Let's get started. So, quick recap from yesterday's lesson. I know yesterday was a little bit tricky, but like I say, you all gave it a really, really good go, and the comments were amazing. So, just keep practicing. Right, so we're rounding 13.528 to the nearest. And first of all, we're doing it to the nearest whole number. So whole number, the whole number in this question is 13. They're one ten and three ones. So if we do it to the nearest whole number, you need to look to the digit to the right, and that instructs instructs us, oh we're good at this morning. Instructions what us to do on this one. So 13, 5 tells us to round up. So 13 becomes 14. So the answer for the first one is 14. Now for the second one, we're doing it to the nearest tenth. So here's our tenth digit here, and the digit to the right tells us what to do. 2 tells us to stick or to round down. So it is to the nearest tenth. 13.5, you keep 13 part the same, it's the 5 that we're looking at and the 2 has told us, told us to keep it the same. I'm all gibberish today. And the last one, to the nearest hundredth. So we find our hundredth digit, which is the 2. The digit to the right tells us what to do and it's 8. So 8 tells us to round up. So it's, it's changing the hundredth digit, so the answer is 13.53, because the eighth has told us to change, okay? Hope you did okay on that. Hope you're having a nice day so far. Again, warm today. I don't know where you, like, where you are, how warm it is there, but I think it's about 21 here. It's lovely. So... Roman numerals today. I, I love teaching Roman numerals. I don't know why. I think it's because it's like breaking a code with the letters and the numbers. It feels like code breaking a little bit. So um, it's one of the more random things to teach in maths, but I really, really enjoy it. And you do see it around in places. Like you can get a lot of watches and a lot of clocks that have Roman numerals. Um, one tip for you is if you watch a BBC programme, even just like the news, at the very, very, very end of the programme, the last thing you see, so the programme will finish and it will go through all the credits, all the people that worked on the programme, and the very, very last screen, before it cuts out to something else, at the very bottom, it will have Roman numerals, and it, that tells you what year the programme was made. So have a look. 
Uh, maybe watch the news later or, or watch the end of the news or find a program that you like on BBC. Um, for example, my daughter watches Bing. <laughs> so at the end, it might just be that there's a little Roman numeral at the bottom telling you when it was made. Um, we'll look at the three questions in a minute, but I'll obviously model to you how to do this. First of all, so the, what the three questions, the question one was, what are all the letters in the Roman numerals? Today, when we do the calculation, we're only focusing up to 100. Tomorrow, we'll go above 100, but I still want us to know what all the letters are. So this is one question we can do. So if you've got those three questions, have them ready and you can tick them off as you go along. The first one, I is one. I is one. So we've got I, I, I. Then there's a new one. V is five. Okay. And then the next one, X is 10. So we've got one, five, ten. The next one, which is easy to forget, is 50, and that's L. And it's an easy one to forget, and sometimes you might know that 50 has got a letter, but you can't remember which one. A tip I can give you for this is if you're a swimmer, and you do swimming, and you swim lengths, so if, you've got a, if there's a swimming pool, and if you swim one length of a swimming pool, that is actually 50 metres. The length of an average swimming pool is 50 metres. So that's the way that I remember it, is length is 50. The next one is 100, which is C. Why is it 100? C is a thousand, uh, sorry, 100 years. A century is 100 years. So C means century, which means 100. What is after that? So you've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So just like 50, 500 needs its own letter, which is D. Okay, D is 500. And then the last one is M, which is 1,000. So those are all the letters that are used in the Roman numeral alphabet. Question I always get asked is, why do they only go up? What if they need a number that's bigger than a thousand? You can still sort of play along and have numbers that are up, like you can go into two thousand, three thousand, but that is it. You can't, there isn't anything, it, there's no ten thousand, there's no hundred thousand. Why? Because the Romans didn't need numbers that big. They didn't have, you know, thousands of objects or thousands of years or thousands, it, like, even like towns, they didn't have thousands of people. Like settlements like where people lived were very, very small, so they didn't need numbers this big. It's only when the English language changed and civilization changed that w that's why we changed it into numbers rather than letters. So a little history lesson there for you. So I'll, look, I'll keep this up at the start. I'll show a few of you how to, because there's a trick with some numbers. Some numbers were a bit mean to form. First question, so say if we want 23, and we're changing it into Roman numerals. So we've got two tens, which is 20, and we've got three ones. So two tens, 10 is x, so it's x, x. x, x here first, and then three is just one, two, three. So you just blend those together, so that's 23. 23 is xx, two tens, and one, two, three. Okay. I'll try one the other way around now. I've been given lx vii. I. A good way to do this is to make notes of the numbers underneath. So l, I know, is 50. x is 10. v is 5. And I, I is 2. And all you've got to do is blend those numbers in that have been partitioned and make them into one number. So you've got 50 plus 10, which is 60. And then 65, 66, 67. 
So L X V I I is 67. And the last one, 49. Now this is a very, very important one because four and nine are done a little bit differently. Four is done as one less than five and nine is done one less than 10. That doesn't just apply to four and nine, it applies to 40 and 90 and 400 and 900. They're always done as one less and I'll show you how. So 40, in fact, I'll start with four. I'll start with four. So four, we know that V is five and we know one is one. So it is I, V. It is one less than five. Because if you look at IV and you think, well, it's one and five. That doesn't work. It's not 15. It's one less than five. You can't do one takeaway five because that's um, it's four. So if you see a smaller number in front of a bigger number, it's saying it is less than. So it is, if it's 40, we've got 10 and we use 50. So 40 is x, l, x is 10, l is 50, and it is 10 less than 50, which is 40. Okay, with nine, nine is one less than, what's nine one less than? 10, so it is i, x, one and 10. 90, for example, would be 10 less than 100. So 100 take away 10 is 90. So the original num number I had was 49. So as we already looked at, 40 is X, L, 10 less than 50. And then nine is one less than 10. So yeah, it looks weird having X on both sides of it, but just structure it, break it down, find out what the 40 is first, then find out what the nine is, and then put it all together, okay? Right, let's have a go. I'm gonna be a bit mean. You might have written these down, but I'm gonna take them off just in case. So your other two questions, the first challenge question was, to write all the letters in the Roman numerals. Question two, the challenge question I posted was, what is X, V, I in number form? And what is, I was mean here, oh, number three, what is 44 in Roman numerals? Think about what I just told you. While you have a go, I'll do some shout outs. loads of answers. Well done Lachlan. Oh if you're saying hello then I haven't already said hello to you please because I've got people just saying hi and I don't know who you are. <laughs> hi Heidi, hi Ezra. Hi Adam and Chloe in Manchester. Oh, some people say, oh, yeah, I've done this at school. Hi, Aaron. Oh, got more answers coming in. Fantastic. Amazing. So, oh, well done. Yes, they're all coming in now. Hi, Soren and Abs. Hi, Hallie Beth. Hello, right. Plenty of answers coming in, so now I'll go through it. And then there'll be some super challenges. X. So, X is 10. 
V is five and I is one. So if I blend all those together, it's 16. 16. 40, as I just told you before, 40 is 10 less than 50. So that's X, L, and then four is one less than five. So that's I, V. So the answer is X, L, I, V. You don't have to just write it straight, straight down there. You can do some working out underneath. Okay. Don't worry if you're finding the fours a bit hard because it's supposed to be a bit tricky, okay? Right, your turn now. Lots of challenges I've got. Okay, I will do them three at a time. First of all, I'm going to give you numbers and I'd like you to convert them into Roman numerals. And then in the next three questions, I'm going to give you the Roman numerals and I'd like you to convert them into numbers. So the first number is 52. The second number is 48, and the next number is 98. Remember, we're only doing up to 100 today. Tomorrow, we'll be doing bigger numbers. Have a go at that. Super, well done. Hi, Aria. Oh, got some answers coming in. Well done, Hanek. Yep, there is definitely a pattern. Well done. Excellent. So I've got Han that's got an answer. Chloe's got an answer. Let me see any more come up. Give me a few more seconds. Lachlan's got an answer. Oh, here we go. They're coming through. Well done, Heidi. Oh, right. There we go. I can see quite a few now. Because there's a bit of delay from when I'm recording to when I'm looking. So, 50. 50 is L. I. I. For two. So, it's L. I, I. Okay, well done. Now, 40, remember, 40 is 10 less than 50. So that's X, L. And 8 is 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's X, L, V, 1, 2, 3. And um, if you've done... Um, the Tudors, you'll know that if all the kings and queens were like Henry, it's like Henry VIII, so it would be V-I-I-I. Really, we shouldn't do it like that. That was the posh way of doing it. You should do separate I, I, I. That was a signature. This was a sort of signature way of doing it. But it's not proper. It's not what they call mathematical. And then the last one, again, we had 90. So 90 is 10 less than 100. So X is 10 and C is 100. And then 8, just like the top one, V, I, I, I. So it's X, C, V, I, I, I. Okay. Very long, look how long that, um, that Roman numeral is compared to just two digits. <laughs> right, this is the fun bit now. This is the code breaking where I give you the Roman numeral and you've got to break the code with the letters to work out 
what number I'm giving you. So, you ready? It's question four, got question five, and question six. So, question four is X, 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 I, V, and they just fit on the board. The next one is L, X, X, I, and the last one is X, L, V, I, I. Give that a go. <laughs> well done, I can see some people. Hi Kieran, I can see lots of people in there. It's nice when you get it right, isn't it? It's really good. I'm glad you're excited. Yeah, hi Kieran. Obviously, you didn't live too far from me. Well done, Elliot. That's fine, Lily. Yeah, it's all about learning this. Well done, Lucia, Adriana, Sam. Brilliant. Answers coming in already. Lofton, you're so quick. You're so quick. I'm just checking your answers. Go, oh, got more answers. Sam's got one. Right, we've got a few now, so let's go through it. Let's break the code. Let's break the code. So again, I like to write underneath. So X, X, X is 30. I, V, right. I is 1 and V is 5. So it's 1 less than 5, which is 4. So that's 34. Okay? So just remember that with that digit. This one, L is 50, and then XX is 20, and I is 1. So 50 plus 20 is 70, plus the 1 is 71. And then the last one, X is 10, and L is 50. So we can't do that. It needs to be 10 less than 50, so that's actually 40. And then V is 5 and II is 2. So it is 47. So we've got our 10 and our 50, which is 40, because we take them away, plus the 5 and the 2, which is 7, so it's 47. There you go. Well done. Tomorrow, Friday, we're going to be doing more Roman numerals, but we're going to go past 100. We're going to be going up to, up to, and maybe a little bit further than 1,000. So if you found today, oh, that was easy. Tomorrow's going to be more of a challenge, okay? If you found today a bit, just keep practicing. There'll be stuff tomorrow that you can still have a go at. I'll just obviously keep pushing it a little bit further. I um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Um, some of you, I put a comment, someone put a comment saying um, you have an entry for... The, uh, the Maths Live competition, the poster, just get your parents to email it to me. Oh, and right this second, as soon as I've finished, I'm going to put the challenge question up from today's lesson. There's two. One of them is a simple match the numbers to the Roman numerals, easy. The second one is a game which you can print out and cut up. It's like a, it's a Roman numerals jigsaw and I love playing it. So I'll put both of those up now. Right, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.